Are you all thirsty? <laughs> That's what I ask when you walk into my bar. And you know what? The answer is always yes. <laughs> but my goal is not just to make you any cocktail. My goal is not just to take your order, get you a drink, and hand it to you and say, that'll be $10. My goal is to actually take you on a journey back in time through a cocktail. The building that my bar is in dates back to the 1870s. It was a wig and hair store. It was owned by a German guy named John G. Jap. And there's a lot of original things still in this bar. It was a wig and hair store for over 100 years, my goodness. You'll notice that the tile ceiling's original. You'll notice the back bar, which used to store and showcase all this hair and hair products, is still original to the building. Now it has a bunch of booze in it. <laughs> You'll also notice that I don't have any TV in my bar. In this way, I did this on purpose. This is a way that I make sure that you can pay attention to your now. You can pay attention to the people you're with. You can pay attention to the new people you might meet. It helps you to slow down and also use your imagination when I make you a drink and tell you the story. So, you come into the bar, you sit down, and I say, before you can even order, I say, can I make you something special? You don't have to make a decision. So I make you something, and I put it in front of you, and I say, please take a sip. And you say, oh my gosh, Molly, that is so freaking good. <laughs> but if you don't like it, you know, it, this never, ever happens, but if you don't like it, of course, I will take it back and make you something else. But like I said, it never happens. I'm really lucky in that way. After you taste it, I tell you the story behind it. How do I know these stories? I read old cocktail books. I read old cocktail books from before Prohibition. I read them like novels. I love it. I memorize all these old recipes that came way before, over 100 years ago. Memorize them. I study the ingredients in each cocktail. And then I study where it came from, who made it, where it was made, and what was going on in the world at that time. And then I get to share it with you. Isn't that neat? I love history. I always have. When I was a little girl, I would watch old black and white movies. And I love period films. Oh my gosh, I just love them. <laughs> I always like to imagine what it must have been like back then, you know? What it must have felt like, the different sounds you would hear that are different from today, and what it must have smelled like too. I know that's weird, but I do think about that. <laughs> I'm just fascinated by it. I think it's so cool. I think history is really, really important to know. I think it's important to know what happened in the past. That way, you can make better decisions in the, future, in, the, in the present moment to have a better future, ultimately, you know? I think it's so, so important. So, say, how many of you have ever had an old-fashioned? All right. <laughs> well, when you come into my bar, <laughs> I don't just make you an old-fashioned. All of a sudden, you are drinking a drink that dates back all the way to the early 1800s the first original cocktail. The first original cocktail was made up of sugar, water, bitters, and spirit. I have to stand still, I'm sorry. I'm so used to moving around, I'm behind the bar. <laughs> um, but all of a sudden, you're drinking this original cocktail. That was all, it was drank in the morning. I think we should bring that back, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of coffee, a little old fashioned. The old timers, as history went on, the old timers, you know, seeing all these new drinks come out, they would be like, screw these old frou-frou drinks. I want an original cocktail made the old fashioned way. And that's how it gets its name. S say I make you one of my favorite gin drinks, a Pago Club. 
All of a sudden, you're back in the 1880s in Rangoon in Southeast Asia. You're sitting on the veranda of the Pago Club and, uh, and British Officers Club with big wicker fans fanning the heat off of you while you sip this drink made up of gin, fresh lime juice, triple sec, and a dash of bitters to keep it interesting. Say we go to the 19, to 1900, Philadelphia, at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel. You're sitting wearing a tuxedo, seated around a clover-shaped table, having a 10-course meal with your other fellow Clover Club members. George Bolt was the owner of the Bradford, Bellevue, oh my gosh, Bellevue Stratford Hotel. <laughs> and he was a proud member of the Clover Club, so much that when he went to go manage the Ward of Astoria and help open that in New York, he put that drink on the menu. That one is so good. It's gin, tart raspberry syrup, fresh lemon juice, a little bit of French vermouth to calm it all down, and egg white to fluff it back up. So good. Or how about you come into my bar and I make you my favorite cocktail? And it's not just because it tastes so good. This is the Saratoga, made of whiskey, sweet vermouth, bitters, and a little bit of cognac, just to round out the edges. It was created in the 1870s for a gentleman named John Morrissey, who made his fortune bare knuckle boxing, you know, this kind, and gambling. He came back to New York and opened a slew of gambling saloons, including one in Saratoga, New York, very close to the Saratoga race course. The thing about John Morrissey and his saloons is he didn't allow women. So the fact that I, a woman, is making this drink for everybody and telling this story, I can just imagine he's turning in his grave. <laughs> It's funny, you know, being a woman and, and always uh, researching all these old drinks and saloons with a lot of men. Women, unless you were of a certain profession, really weren't welcomed in saloons back then. <laughs> By the early 1900s, though, respectable women could go into saloons. Of course, though, they had to go in their own separate room and drink their drinks out of teacups in a respectable way. <laughs> I love what I do, though. I love that uh, I get to put my passion for history into my profession, and I created that. It's so cool. I love also that I get to be creative, because I am an artist. Although I don't make art with light and color, I make art with flavor and spirits and balance. And I think that's so neat. And in that way, I'm always thinking, though, when I'm making a cocktail, I better be good, Molly, because one day there is going to be a girl, and I can imagine she's probably tattooed head to toe, rocking her own style, but still respected for her professionalism and making one of my drinks and telling my story. <laughs> It's very important to make sure that everything you do will make history. Make sure you're in the newspapers. <laughs> make, sure, <laughs> make sure that you are known. I will drink to that. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, now I need a drink. <laughs>